With more and more people adopting the new DJI O3A system, we're starting to see more and more common issues come to light. One of these is actually people getting the wiring wrong and causing damage to the O3A unit. Whilst this initially may seem like a silly thing to do, there is actually a reason why this is catching people out, and in this video I want to try and explain it. I'm also going to be tearing this ear unit down and seeing if there is a way of fixing this if you were to cause damage and I'm going to need to do a bit of a repair on this one because I might have broke something whilst I was taking it apart. Anyway, let's get on with it. Let's take a look at what the actual situation is and explain why this is happening and then see if there's anything we can do about it. Okay, now just to explain the whole history of this situation, when DJI released the original ear unit, there wasn't flight controllers out there with dedicated digital VTX ports. In the box with the ear unit, you get this cable with a connector on one side and bare wires on the other with soldered ends. You would plug the connector into the VTX or the ear unit, and then you would solder these wires to the correct places on your flight controller, i.e. Power, UART and S bus if you were using the DJI control system. Over time, flight controller manufacturers started to add dedicated ports onto their flight controllers like this one has here. This dedicated port put the voltage, the UART and the S bus all in one place. However, there was no cable from DJI that would connect to this. What you would get is the flight control manufacturer provide you a cable in the box, such as this one here, which would plug into the flight controller and then that would be compatible with the original DJI Air unit, allowing you a nice, simple plug and play setup. However, the real interesting thing about this was this was not a standardized connector. It was not a DJI design connector. It was simply each flight controller manufacturer would choose what they wanted to do. Some would stick to pads, some would add a port like this one. As a result of this, all of the manufacturers would do something a little bit different. Some of them would wire it one way, some of them would wire it another, because there was no need for them to do it a specific way, because the cable to the flight controller to the ear unit was custom to them. Now with the release of the Vista, it was very much the same situation, apart from the fact there was no dedicated connector on the Vista itself. You just had empty wires in the box and again the situation was you either had to hardwire it directly to your flight controller or use a cable provided by the flight controller and solder that directly to the ear unit. Now with the release of O3 things have slightly changed and that change is that DJI have now put a connector on the other side of this cable. Whereas before as I've said the original cable was beer ends, DJI have now chosen to put this connector on which is pre-wired. This connector is not specific to any particular make of flight controller, it is a pinout wiring that DJI has chose to use. The confusion over this all comes when people try to plug this into their flight controller. For instance, if we take this unit here, the connection that DJI have used is the same and it will plug straight in. However, it is not a guarantee that the pinout on that connector is the correct pinout for the O3 ear unit and as a result of this, some people are actually damaging their ear unit's S bus port or actually burning them out. This is not an issue caused by DJI specifically, it is simply as a result of flight controller manufacturers choosing to do things one way and DJI now choosing to do things another. As we move forward, we are seeing flight controllers release into the market with the correct connector and correct pinout on board, but there are many flight controllers that were sold in the past that do appear to have the right connection, but they don't have the right wiring, and if you were to use them, they would damage your O3 ear unit. The very basics of this situation is, whilst you may find that the DJI provided harness fits your flight controller, you should not trust that it is wired correctly. If your flight controller does come with its own harness to connect to the ear unit, you should always use that and you should always double check the actual wiring pinout is correct before powering it up. 
Now this is obviously going to affect people on many different types of setups. People who are looking to build a new aircraft, so they've just bought a new flight controller and they're looking to plug it in. Again, if we look here on this Holy Bro, we've got a DJI style connector on the side, but it is a different pinout once again, and you're gonna have to use a different harness to connect to this one. But it's also going to affect people with things like this, the bind and flies, the Nazgul, the early ones, people who want to replace their existing Vista Air unit or the DJI one, an upgrade to 03 and again the connection that you may have in here already is not necessarily going to work with the new 03 e unit so you're going to need to take some time and pin it all out now having spent some time looking around at some of the older flight controllers and some of the new ones there is no easy way to tell what is compatible and what isn't and the simple answer is always double check the wiring as I've said. If you're someone who's looking to upgrade your ear unit so you might have something like a Nazgul and you want to put it onto that, you can do it but again you're going to need to be careful with the wiring. iFlight do show the wiring diagrams on their website and if you look at the iFlight controller specifically they use a much larger connector than the one DJI is supplying on O3 and whilst you could physically fit it in with some pins to spear, the wiring is not the same and you should not do it. iFlight tend to split SBUS off into one connector and then you have the power and you are into another, but this is not pin compatible with any of the harness that DJI currently supply. Looking at some of the others, there appears to be some new flight controllers coming from Diatone that do say that they are 03 compatible out the box. And when you look at these, they are saying that they have a new dedicated DJI connector, which is the 6P SH 1.0. But again, I would be double checking the wiring on this to confirm it's right. This is only on the fourth generation of this Mamba Mark 4722. There could be earlier versions that have the same connector, but with a different wiring. So again, you do need to check. Looking at some of the things from May Texas, there's a mix. You've got some of them on pads, some of them on a connector. And again, the situation is the same with Speedy B. Some of their flight controllers have pads like you see here, and some of them have connectors. In the end, the simple rule is you need to double check before you install. Now, if you were to actually wire the ear unit wrong, there are a number of scenarios that could happen. You may burn out the power input, you may damage the UART or damage the SBUS output. A number of the flight controllers that I have seen actually have 100% reversed wiring. In that scenario, you would actually end up putting battery voltage or back voltage down the SBUS output and blow that port. Best case scenario, you might just kill the SBUS output, which means you could still use the ear unit with third party remote systems just not with DJI. There are though connectors that have completely different wiring and you could end up damaging the UART meaning you got no OSD or even damage the power input. Now there wasn't a lot of information out there on what could actually be repaired on this ear unit if you were to do these things. So I decided to tear this one down and have a look if there is protection diodes on this ear unit just like on the other ear unit and the Vista. Unfortunately in the process of me tearing this one down I did end up damaging it and I'm going to need to repair that along the way as well. So what we're going to do next is take a look at what my findings actually were with what is going on in this ear unit and we're going to see if I can actually fix it as well. The first thing we had to do once it was stripped was remove all of the internal compound. This is located all over the PCBs. You have the main input port there on the right and the area that would have the diodes would be on this side of the board because the UART comes into here into the Eagle 3 chipset on the other side. Once I managed to get it all out, it was then time to clean the board up. Now, unfortunately, in the process of tearing this ear unit down, I actually did two pieces of damage. When I lifted the cable, which is glued down on each corner, the connector actually broke, leaving a piece of the plastic in place on the main board. And when I removed the glue from around the connection, it actually lifted two resistors from the PCB that the glue was covering as well. This would need to be repaired before I'd be able to use the ear unit again and we'll take a look at that later on. Now you can see the PCB is clean and I've got it under the other microscope to give you a better view. Now I've spent some time looking around this PCB in close detail and as far as I can tell so far there is no 
diodes that I can see located on this board anyway, whether it be in the main open area here or underneath that metal can that's hanging out over the top. There is obviously components all over the board, but I'm seeing no trace of protection diodes like we've seen on the Vista or the original DJI Air unit. It is something I want to continue to investigate, but here and now I'm not seeing any easy fix, like removing the diodes on the Vista that would allow the UARTs to continue to work. And here and now, if you were to damage either the UARTs, the power input or the S bus port, there's a real chance that it would be permanent. So as you've seen, sadly, there are no diodes right now. That means as far as I can tell, there is no easy fix for this air unit. If you were to cause damage, the chances are it's going to be permanent. The next thing we need to do is now see if we can fix the damage I've caused. So the first task was to repair the connector on the flat ribbon cable. Now, luckily, none of the pins themselves were damaged. It was simply the case that the plastic carrier for the connector had broke off and that had stuck in the other side. I was able to remove it, gently put it back in place on the cable and then reattach it on either side. Luckily, nothing else on this side was particularly badly damaged. So once it was soldered back on on either side, I gave it a clean up with some isopropyl alcohol and it was all looking good. Next, it was time to sort the missing resistors. Now, I checked them on my multimeter and they were showing up as 5K on both the ones that were left. So I decided to replace the two that are missing with 5Ks. I spent some time looking around the bench on some scrap boards and found two compatible ones on an old HD0 Whoop VTX. So the first thing I needed to do was clean up the pads and just get some better solder on there rather than this horrible lead free stuff, which caused me the problems in the first place. Then it would simply be a case of getting the resistors off the other board, mounting them onto this board and tidying everything up. Now, rather than just going in straight with hot air, I decided to try and tag them down with the iron first, and then I'd finish it off with hot air at the end.
Once they were tagged down in place, it was then time to bring in the hot air to get everything settled down correctly. Before doing that though, we need to cover the plastic connectors, otherwise they will melt. So what I did was take a couple of pieces of metal, place it over the connector on each side, and then move in with the gun. Then it was finally time to clean everything up again with some isopropyl alcohol and then at the end check it under the other microscope just to make sure everything looks good. Okay, so I've put it all back together and I've tested it and luckily it's all working fine. Now, with regards to tearing these air units down, it is very, very easy to damage them. DJI have glued various parts, including the ribbon cables, but you also have to be careful that you don't damage anything else in the process too. Even removing the glue comes with risk, as I've showed today, because it can lift components off the board. Now, as for can this be repaired, as you've seen, right now the information is probably not. If you were to reverse the voltage on it, we may be able to do something, but the chances are if you were to burn a UART, I'm not seeing any protection diodes on board at the moment, and as a result of that, we really don't know if there is anything we can do, and the likelihood is probably not. Now, as I've already shown in this video, to prevent any of this happening, please do make sure that you are checking the wiring before firing this up. Do not rely on any cable, any harness that you're provided. Even when it comes with the flight controller, double check it before putting the power in. That way you're not going to cause any damage. Now, if you have found this video useful, please do let me know what you think in the comment section. If you've got any questions, please do put them in there as well and I will try and answer them. I want to say, if you do want to support the channel to allow us to keep making content like this, potentially destroying ear units, please do consider checking out the link to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee. It's only through the support you give am I able to keep making content like this. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. Stay safe and I will speak to you soon.